Welcome to the second part of the video collab with Henrike Campos, or Big Dev. We made a tiny game project together to explain the overall creation process of a small arcade game. In the first part, Big Dev gives you an overview of the game design and the prototype he made. In this tutorial, we're talking about the game artist work. Based on my experience working on browser and mobile games, I'm going to tell you what a professional artist does and show you how I make the art for a game jam or a prototype. It's a short video and we're summing up hours of work here, so we're really going to focus on the role of the game artist and what he does. The game designer and the game artist have different roles in a development team. The designer defines how the game will play. Sometimes he takes care of the story as well. The designer should know at least a bit about programming and should be able to create the game prototype. The work of an artist consists of creating the assets and integrating them in the engine. This is important. You are not just making the art in your digital painting program. You are responsible for exporting your sprites and putting them in the engine, setting them up so that the level designer, the developers and the game designers can use them directly. Because of that, you have to stay organized. You have to name your assets properly to put them in the right folders to make it easier for your teammates to do their work. On top of that, in a team of two, you're creating everything from concept to finish, while in a larger company, your job will be more specific. Let me now explain how I go about creating art for the game. Everything starts with the game design. In most cases, you must ensure that the mechanics work well with only basic shapes. You want to make the game prototype first, not the art. This isolates the core design and allows you to test it. Also, the art is based on the prototype, be it the story, the scale, the look of the assets, the visual style if you want. This is especially important for a small arcade game like this one. We are going to base the game off the mechanics. Once you have that, you are going to quickly plan your assets to make a list of the assets that you have to create. Because there is a prototype, I know from the start how many assets I have to create exactly. There's the scrolling background, the ceiling, the floor, the player, the rope, the hook, the rocket platform. I also went ahead and added a banana bird to breathe some life in the background. The idea with this extra character is to eventually have something in the game world to give extra feedback to the player. I would normally plan animations ahead at that point, because the way you paint your sprites will influence what you can do afterwards. But because this was for a weekly video, we had a tight time budget to make everything. So I decided to only make static assets this time. After the planning comes the concept art phase, if we can call it that way, because in this project, it's very simple. It was just a matter of taking aesthetic decisions based off your asset list. For that, I work with a single document and I'm going to keep it and do everything from the concept to the final graphics directly. This works well for a prototype or a very small game. You can take some design decisions on the fly and paint your ideas instantly. There is no guesswork like if you were coming up with a full story on paper and then painting everything later. Henrique and I just needed a basic, coherent world to work with. So I just took the interactions the player could have with every asset or gameplay element and took decisions based off of that. For example, you can hook on moving blocks, but if you touch them from the left, they kill you. Initially, I make a platform. And later on, we discussed the design with Henrique, and he told me that I should make the platform look like a rocket by adding some nose on the left side, so that the player would understand that if he collided with it, he would die. And sometimes you will have people try out the game later on, and they won't understand what's happening or what the assets mean, so you'll have to redo them. That's just part of the process, it's completely normal. So don't spend too much time making very detailed assets at first, really create a global concept and put everything in the game to try it out. It's only at that point that you will know if it works or not. Having good looking assets in your painting program is not good enough. 
Once you have basic sprites that look okay, you start building the asset themselves. And it's not a linear process. You're going to make some tests, go back to concept art, you're going to throw some layers away, and sometimes you end up doing multiple versions of the same sprite, and you have to try out both in the engine to see which one works best. For example, I made two versions of the ground. First, some kind of treadmill that scrolls to make the player feel like he's running, although in the actual game he stays in place. And then I made something much simpler, some kind of stage on which the character would be running, like running in place or something, just like the two characters, the pig and the bird, would be giving some kind of show. And we stuck with that in the end, thinking that it would fit the arcade style a bit better. When you are painting, I invite you to focus on one asset for a little while, and then jump onto something else, and come back to your previous asset later. It's a good way for you to see your own mistakes if you can't get peer reviews right away. It will help you to refresh your eyesight. And another quick tip, I told you that you have to organize your document, and that's true, but you don't need to organize it from the get-go. It's only when you know that you want to keep the assets that you can start color coding and naming layers. And if you feel like that is useless, honestly, it's not at all. First of all, it's good for you and your coworkers who will use the document. It helps you to find things fast, especially as your documents grow big. But more importantly, you want to have that because then you'll use the layer names to automate the exports. And from there on, the process is pretty straightforward. We've talked about it in the past, you just have to paint each and every game asset until it's done. And I detailed my own workflow in a series of seven videos and you will find the link in the description. So that's it for now. We'll talk about putting the assets in the game engine in a future video as we make our platformer. And in the meantime, if you want to go further with your art, I just released a new training on Gumroad. It's called Game Art Quest, the side-scrolling game workshop. It's a premium series that will get you to create your own game assets. It's available in early access right now, and you can get 25% off if you buy it fast. The link's on the screen. It should also be in the video description. I invite you to check it out. And that's it. Thank you for your support. See you in the next video.